a little bit of an update here. So <clears throat> now it's time to actually do some fab work on the frames. Uh, so far, I've just had everything kind of mocked up, uh, had it to uh, get all the, the lights, at least the wire harness for the lights going. But now here comes the tough part. <laughs> I actually have to get, so here's the donor zero frame. And um, of course there's a swing arm. Now the swing arm already bolts up to this frame right here. So the challenge is gonna be getting, basically I gotta get the swing arm and the motor mount to be mounted in this frame. So what I'm planning on doing is cutting out of this zero frame. Basically you've got the uh, lower motor mount section there, a little bit of the upper, uh, the battery tray right here. So I'm gonna be cutting this kind of lower corner out and fitting it right in about here. And right where these are, this is where the axle bolts are, or sorry, the swing arm bolts are gonna go through. And so uh, that that's all gonna fit right here. And then of course this motor is gonna be fit right here in this frame. So definitely gonna be a challenging part of the build. I haven't done a lot of aluminum welding and this is gonna be welding a cast piece of aluminum to basically like a, a thinner part of aluminum. So, you know, you've got a big, thick, heavy part, well into a smaller part, that's always challenging. And of course, aluminum itself is challenging. Um, I'll be using my new TIG welder. Here goes. Time to hack up a perfectly good motorcycle frame. So here is the big piece that I cut out the lower part of the frame. This is a piece of cast aluminum. This thing probably weighs like, I don't know, three, two to three pounds, something like that. It's not a crazy amount of weight, but it's something. Um, so that'll be nice to, to lose a bit of that. Now, you might think, well, I'm gonna lose some stiffness out of here, but it's gonna come back when I put, I'm gonna weld this part of this uh, frame back down in there. It's gonna be the motor mount, and it's gonna be where the swing arm mounts. But anyway, so that's cut out of the frame now. And I got some room to start shoving stuff through and kind of figuring out where it's gonna go. The batteries, I'm gonna have the batteries basically as low as possible. They're a lot of weight. And I wanna keep the center of gravity as low as possible. That's gonna make handling better, you know. It's gonna make it easier to flip-flop this bike over back and forth as I'm going through the turns, which will already be kinda of hard because it's kinda of got a raked out suspension, a fork angle there, and um, you know, it's just not really set up like a race bike. It's starting to look like a motorcycle again. So I lucked out because the width of this frame is about 10 and a half inches wide. And I just had to trim a little bit of, um, casting off of the frame and then uh, the zero frame just kind of slid right in there more or less you know with a little bit of filing a little bit of grinding what I've been working on is welding the motor mounts into this zero frame here so the motor that I'm going to use that one over there is not the stock motor that came with this uh, so the holes are not right so I welded uh, this motor mount on here and so all that I got left now is I got to weld on the lower tab right down here. So these holes, so now you got the four slotted holes for the four mounting bolts on the motor. So I got to cut this out, go right out there, and then weld this one in here. So I recently got a bit better at aluminum weldings. Now uh, feel free to judge these, these welds here. They're not the greatest, but they're structural and um, making it work. Uh, I, I got this AHP welder here. Um, really nice welder for the price. So that's what I've been using. Does AC, DC, it's TIG, and uh, comes with a foot pedal control. It's on Amazon if you wanna check it out. AHP, it's a 200 amp welder, but also does stick. So anyway, that's what I'm working on right now. Once I finish the motor mounts, um, that's pretty much it. I'm gonna take this center section frame and uh, put it back inside here and weld that to that frame. And I've welded up a couple other things onto the zero frame. I've got a nice little tray down here. That's where the controller is gonna go. And uh, I've got it basically mocked up in here, a couple bolts holding it. I did weigh it. It's between 35 and 40 pounds. Uh, my bathroom scale is not super accurate, but I'd say somewhere around 38 is uh, I think what this is. So not too bad, uh, a little heavier than I wanted it to be. But uh, you know, with the frame and swing arm, I don't think we're doing too bad. Now I've got the uh, mount for the, the battery here. So there's two batteries and one's gonna be mounted down here. So I built this rack for it. And then attached to the rack, I've built my foot pegs here. And they do have a uh, ability to pivot like motorcycles. So if you're going around 
and tight turns can kick up. I need to figure out a spring system for this. But uh, so that lower battery is mounted. The uh, controller is right here, sits right there, and it's gonna get some good cooling because it's got an aluminum plate right here which is touching right on the back of the controller, which also needs to get cooling while it's in use. So that'll help right there. Maybe eventually I'll put some cooling fins down here to help out. Um, the motor has been mounted, and then here is the uh, top, where the top battery is going to sit. It's going to sit right in here. So I built this little plate for it, and then uh, this 8020 aluminum here is going to have some secure, uh, some hard points on it. There'll be a strap that goes over the battery to hold it in. So I've got the batteries mounted, the controller mounted, and uh, now I've just got to figure out how to mount me, which is uh, building out the uh, subframe on the rear here. And so this is where it's going to go. And I want to keep it as low as possible. And the way I'm only going to figure out how much clearance I have between the wheel when it uh, goes all the way up and down this is what I've got right here. So here's the shock. If I measure from the the extreme where it would hit the bottom out, you know, a donut right there uh, to the bottom part of the shock, it's about two inches. So I've got this yardstick right here, which is the same orientation of the shock. And then I've got this is going to be my mock-up swing arm here. And so as I go up and down two inches, like this, on this front yardstick, right there, I'm measuring it there. Then on the back here, I can measure how many inches up and down of travel I'm gonna get at the rear point of the wheel, and then I'll know how much clearance I need to have between this and the uh, the top of my uh, sub excuse me, subframe right there. So that's where I'm at, it's coming along. Um, once I get the rear subframe mounted so I can then have a place to have, have a seat when I'm riding this thing, then it's on to wiring it. Uh, I've already got the lights wired, but I've got to make myself um, a connector, or excuse me, put the wires in this connector here that are eventually going to go to the motor. Basically, they just have to go to the motor and the throttle. For the most part, that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, and then uh, my, my charger, my onboard charger is going to go right here. So this guy gets mounted right like that. It's got its own cooling fan, which has some nice airflow back there. And so anywhere I go, I can just plug into uh, 110 or 220 and charge this thing up. So this is some more scrap left over from the, uh, the zero motorcycle frame. And uh, I gotta put a seat, it's gonna be right about here, which is where I wanna sit. Now originally I wanted to sit a little farther down, kind of, down in that pocket there, but there's just not enough clearance between uh, this rear fender here when the suspension comes up when there's weight on the bike. So pretty much just have to be kind of flat across this level right there is as low as I can go. Um, and I want to have a nice comfortable seat. So I know this looks really silly. It looks like a tractor seat, but it's super comfortable. Um, I've been using this seat on my recumbent uh, bicycle that I made. So I took it off. It used to be on that bicycle right there. Um, if I could use this, I would. I mean, I can, but these seats are like 40 bucks and well, I'm a cheapskate, so I don't want to spend another 40 bucks. Um, I mean, if I really want to, eventually I'll just buy a seat like this. But I thought I'd see if I could make one. Um, so what I'm gonna do is kind of copy this seat out of aluminum, make a seat pan that's kind of similar to this. Uh, maybe not quite so large, maybe not with quite so high bolsters on the side. Um, so I'm gonna use this aluminum here. I got a couple sheets like this. Uh, these came off from old scooters that I had. Um, so I'm gonna use that as uh, the, the bottom for the seat pan. And uh, basically, you know, I'll cut out a shape similar to this. And then to get this kind of rounded, curved uh, back end, what I'm gonna do is take some construction paper, uh, cut it out to fit this shape, and then um, take that shape and then flatten it out and put it on a piece of aluminum, cut it out, and then I'll just kind of hand hammer it and see if I can get, get it to like a nice contour, uh, similar to some, something like uh, the seat that you see here.